Hello, and welcome to Nemo's webinar, Developing an Exhibition in Liaison with Visitors, a 360-degree approach. My name is Elizabeth, and I work for Nemo. As the network for museums in Europe, our main activities are advocating for museums at an EU level, providing training opportunities, and providing a platform for museums to exchange and learn from one another, and helping museums to cooperate across borders. In this function, Museum, or NEMO has increased its online engagement, which includes webinars such as this one, with the hope that our participants can continue their professional development even during these challenging times. We are looking forward to today's webinar, facilitated by Magoshata Zayats, the Deputy Marketing Manager at the Poland Museum of the History of Polish Jews in Warsaw. She is responsible for coordinating research into current and potential audiences and operationalizing its findings in the Poland Museum's activities. She has actively promoted state-of-the-art marketing data acquisition and application data to cultural institutions. This webinar shall explore the 360-degree approach where visitor research can effectively help design all the steps of the exhibition design. At the end of the webinar, you will have the opportunity to ask questions in the chat function. Now, without further ado, I will hand this over to Magashata to get us started. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're hearing well. My name is Magashata Zayant, and um, thank you for, for this uh, introduction. So today, I would like to, uh, tell you, um, to tell you about the practice we have in our museum, Pauline Museum. Um, the, name, the full name is Pauline Museum um, of the History of Polish Jews, which is the, one of the biggest Jewish museums in uh, Europe. And uh, I wanted to tell you about our practice to uh, integrate uh, visitors' perspective and visitors' insights into life cycle of an exhibition. We call it often um, 360 degrees approach. And I will present you this approach in detail. So uh, often we, we ask uh, uh, we ask um, the questions. We, we try to uh, solve the the question: How to make our exhibitions comprehensive and engaging to visitors? And also we we try to find um, an effective message to attract visitors. And also we would like to um, sometimes we would like to. Improve uh, make some improvement on the exhibition to improve the visitor experience and how it is possible to make it. Uh, so um, uh, we dis uh, we uh, in our pract practice we we uh, integrated the the visitor voice into the life cycle of an exhibition. So what is the life cycle of, of an exhibition? So uh, we, we first built concept of, the, of an exhibition, then we install the exhibition, build communication strategy, promotion plan, open the exhibition, and sometimes we improve, make some improvements of, on the exhibition if it is possible. So uh, when we integrate the voice of visitors, um, when we integrate the perspective of visitors in the, this uh, life cycle, we uh, we uh, we sometimes interview our tar target groups when we build the concept of the exhibition. We also integrate the data from segmentation, from uh, the understanding about barriers and drivers when we build the communication strategy. We also uh, al almost always evaluate uh, the exhibition when it is ready with the target groups. Uh, so uh, I will start with the concept. So uh, I will tell you, I will describe you this uh, this approach based on a on a specific example of uh, an exhibition, and uh, and I will tell you first about the concept of this exhibition. So um, so uh, uh, so two years ago we had in Poland a cent centenary of Poland regaining independence, and on that occasion we wanted in our museum we wanted to to open a historical exhibition for children, eight from six to 12. On this exhibition, we wanted to concentrate 
uh, we wanted to focus on the on the civic edu education. We wanted to. Um, uh, to understand with with the with the children what the nation is, what what the community is, what the society, democracy, and freedom are. Uh, but in this in the same time, we, we wanted to have on this uh, to make a real hands-on experience on this exhibition. Uh, the the whole exhibition, the whole concept was based on the, on a book uh, written by a, a famous. Uh, uh, famous in Poland pedagogue Janusz Korczak. Uh, the book is called King Mad the First, and it is like um, uh, it is it is uh, like Polish Peter Pan a little Peter Pan a little bit. And um, uh, this book this book uh, um, tells about adventures of a young king. It is very known in Poland and probably in many other countries, especially in Eastern Europe. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, um, when building this concept, we decided to interview the target groups, meaning, meaning the the kids. We wanted to to talk with the kids in order to check our concept. So, um, we wanted to check the language, topics, and also activities we planned for the children. So to do that, we organized in that specific case two, uh, two focus groups with uh, nine-year-olds and we wanted to check the prototypes of activities planned for this exhibition. So we organized those, two, those focus groups. So here is the photograph of our, um, of our educational center. And, uh, and we, we wanted to check topics and, uh, and activities. So, um, so one, uh, I will tell you about a few of them. Of course, I will not go uh, through, through all, the, all the focus group, but uh, I will tell you about a few of them. One of them is, uh, was, to, um, was, so we asked uh, the kids to, to write, to, to draw, to do a mind map of the word country, state. And it was surprising for us that the kids were uh, did this mind map, but only with images, no words. And also, so it it give it gives it. So we discovered yes, of course we we can we cannot use a lot of words. We should use images. And uh, another um, another discovery, another observation was uh, that the kids were moving a lot in this exercise. They were jumping, they were craw crawling, and yes, of course, the children should move on the exhibition. They they should have possibility uh, for they should have some physical activities there. And also, we gave to the kids uh, the uh, uh, photographs of an empty meadow, and all uh, and we added to that transparent foils and highlighters and we asked them what what kind of a word would you like to live in and uh, and this exercise was very engaging and and uh, the 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 children felt we we could really observe how happy kids are when they feel when they have this sense of agency and sense of decision making and uh, when they feel when they feel free and they, when they feel that they can, um, that they are free in their imagination. So it was a, a very engaging exercise. And they were also interested, the kids were interested what the others do. So it gives, gave us the idea, yes, okay, we can, if, if, we, if we do such an exhibition, we should, uh, we should make also maybe an, an additional small exhibition with the drawings or, or something. Or, or give to the kids the possibility to compare the, the works. So we, in this uh, specific stage of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the preparation, we also checked the language of the exhibition. And this is the example of a text we gave to the kids. And, uh, uh, and, and we realized that we are, we are using words which are not clear for, for the children. For example, we use the word communities. Um, and uh, instead of groups, and groups is far more comprehensible, far more clear for, for the kids. We use the, the, word, the word values, 
and why not honesty, courage and friendship? We used uh, the word community of the city and why not people living in the city? So a uh, lots of lots of such such uh, disappointment and discoveries for us. So um, and uh, um, and another thing, uh, talking about the texts, we realized that the ch that children like open ended questions. So we ask them in those texts, texts, how we can make everyone happy? How much will it cost? And uh, and we realize that the that the questions are far more engaging than than uh, than the texts with statements and questions make it different from the language in schools and uh, and uh, they encourage thinking if of course if they are simple and natural and uh, children feel treated seriously so uh, so we realize that we should use simple language open ended questions hands on activities uh, activities tasks uh, tasks involving uh, different senses and also physical activities because children would like to jump run and crawl and also um, and also uh, let's use images rather than words and why not uh, giving and 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 the kids should uh, would like to take away something with them uh, yeah, so let's go to the stage of preparing the exhibition itself. Uh, so uh, the exhibition, uh, so this is the full title of the exhibition in King Mats Poland, Centenary of Regaining Independence. So it is quite long. But uh, we, we really, uh, folk, we, we really um, uh, tried to, uh, to make a, an interactive exhibition. So first, uh, the exhibition started with an introduction with a film uh, talking about the end of the Great War and rebirth of, Pol of Poland, and also about the book because uh, uh, and and we all okay we are a museum so we did also uh, an introduction with historical items, but then uh, the children could enter the book, uh, so you see the pages of the book. And we put in this book, on one hand, quotes from the book with headphones, and uh, but on the other hand, a lot of sensory elements. So, so, uh, so children could swing on this exhibition. Could uh, children could crawl on this exhibition and also pull? In this case, we have here um, lion's tail. So uh, children could pull the lion's tail very attractive uh, point of our exhibition. Um, so Lion is in a book, in this specific book. Uh, and uh, we organized, we did a space for kids to learn and play with lots of questions on the walls, on the walls. And for example, how to allocate the state budget. Uh, so here um, is a is a scale with, scale with weights and um, the children could allocate the budget into different uh, type of spendings like schools, sports, um, uh, uh, hospitals, uh, etc. And uh, they, they should decide what is more important, what is less important. And also, um, Another question: How does voting in democracy work? Uh, so, in the hall, they were they were balls in three colors and three containers, and children were throwing balls into containers. And if the children threw the most green balls, the entire space became green. So, we have shown that it is the majority who decide what the country looks like. And uh, another. Um, type of activity, what helps you build something together with, with others? So we had uh, a, spa a big space with large blocks and, uh, and, and the kids uh, have to build something and, uh, and the cooperation helped them to build something bigger and more, more strong. Um, as, and we also had a wardrobe and with a uh, uh, with a space to 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 change clothes and um, 
and we ask the question how doctors, journalists, or soldier can how they can support the country and uh, how you uh, how you can take care of the country. Uh, so this is um, in short uh, our exhibition. Uh, so um, and uh, the next stage was building the communication strategy based on the segmentation and based on understanding of barriers and drivers. Drivers. So once again, on the ne on this next stage, we added this perspective of of visitors, of potential visitors, of potential audience. So. Um, so to work on communication strategy, um, we usually invite, uh, we usually do, do workshops in, we, and we invite to those workshops representative for all, of all the part, almost all departments. So we invite uh, people from exhibition department, curators, of course, um, educate people from education department, people from uh, from communication and we work together on building the, the communication strategy uh, uh, for the exhibition. So what is communication strategy? Uh, so it is just, a, so we, we are looking the main idea of the exhibition. We, we are looking uh, for the main, for the main story to tell to, 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 to our potential audience. So what we had on the table on that specific moment, because this 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 stage of working on communication strategy was a stage uh, of before the, the exhibition was ready. So we had on the table uh, images um, prepared for the exhibition um, by an illustrator, and also we knew that uh, this exhibition will talk about about. Uh, about civic education, yes. So about nation, community, society, democracy, etc. And also, we we knew that the that uh, the curator the curators would like to make a hands-on experience. They would like to add all those physical activities. They would like to add. They would like to add this uh, aspect of of, of uh, playing there. So they would like to make this space a very attractive for, for the kids. But in that specific moment, we this mix together, so those images plus uh, this uh, the, the civic education seem to be quite um, quite maybe a little bit difficult for 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 children and for uh, for many of um, parents for many parents. So uh, okay, but first we if we work on um, communication first, we think about the target groups. And in Poland Museum and uh, and uh, and also many Polish institutions work work like that. So we we use segmentation um, of participants in cultural life. And uh, we um, we really uh, when we build the communication strategy, we think about target groups. So. For this specific exhibition, we've selected three target groups. One of this uh, target group, one of those, one of this segment, and I would say the most easy one is the uh, mm, easy to, to to reach. I mean, is the mm, are the consumers of institutional culture. This is the name of this segment, and they go out a lot, uh, but this is only seven percent of the population. A culture is their preferred free uh, pastime, and uh, and they wish to feel special, and they go often to opera, ballet, art gallery, but also museums. So they are they really um, they are re really interested what Pauline Museum is doing, because we are quite big institution, and and so this is our natural target group. Um, it is also uh, quite important that their education is higher than average. Uh, we have another segment which is uh, a natural uh, target group for this specific exhibition. This, uh, they are knowledge seekers. No knowledge seekers uh, are, this is also 
quite small target group. So this is only 11% of the population. They go out in average 26 times a year. And they are focused um, on seeking knowledge and new experience and new skills. And they also go often to museums, to open air museums. And they like historical reenactments, for example. Uh, and this is also, in a way, quite natural target group for such an such uh, for this kind of exhibition. And we have a third we have third um, segment. We call it aspiring mainstream. And uh, um, this segment, uh, so this is uh, twenty one percent of the population in Poland. So this is quite big segment already. And they are interested in attraction for all family members, and and they are they are seeing knowledge, but uh, in the same time they want to spend time together and rest. So they look for a lighter entertainment. Um, they look for lighter culture, if I can say that. They they go often to cinema, to zoo, to theme parks, uh, to historical monuments. And their education is similar to average. Mm. Um, what is important in this specific segment um, is, of course, it it is also in those two previous segments. But this is, uh, but this is, especially, especially uh, this, uh, but this uh, is higher than in previous segment. The, uh, the is the fact that they say. 57% uh, of them say uh, Jewish topics are not interesting to me. So, um, of course, in other segments, people also uh, a lot of people also say say that. But but this is particularly interest. This was particularly interesting for us because we realized that it is very interesting segment for us, and we would like to, and we want, and we want to to go deeper. What is be, what is behind this? This statement: Why, why they are not interested in going to a museum uh, like a Pauline Museum is? So uh, to know, uh, to understand that, we did um, a research on barriers. This this research is built on a methodology called ZMET. It is called Z Hidden Metaphor, so it is American uh, methodology. But what is very important. On, uh, about this methodology is the fact that it is based on images prepared before and shared by respondents. So those images express the association with the research topic. So barrier one is um, this is the barrier. Um, this, this image is is the image brought by um, by one of the respondent and it expressed the association with the with Pauline Museum, so uh, so um, uh, so our respondent said uh, so so one of the one of the biggest barrier the biggest barrier is as I associate Polish Jews with the Holocaust, so I expect images drastic for children in Pauline. So, as a good parent, I will not go to Pauline Museum because this is like a, this is a um, a, a place uh, which is not for for the kids. So, so the, it was for us a, a very a very difficult situation. We we were aware of this barrier, and on the other hand, we wanted to open an exhibition for children and for families. So we had a really difficult situation, and it was really challenging for communication. Uh, for communication to make uh, an effective message in that situation. Another barrier and another image uh, brought by uh, by one of the respondent is okay. You see the the kid with uh, which is tired, and and the idea behind that is that the teams represented in Pauline are too difficult for children. So I will not go there because it is very difficult. So. Museum of the History of Polish Jews it should be very difficult and probably boring for the kids. So I will not go there. Um, 
with with the kids. Maybe I will go alone, but not with my family, not, not with the kids. So it is another barrier. So uh, on the other hand, this is this is a, a very drastic museum. And on, on, on another hand, this is a, a, a museum not for the kids because this is too difficult. Third barrier, uh, you see the image with, with, with a book um, in Hebrew. And, um, and the idea behind that is that I'm not very knowledgeable about the Jewish culture. So as a parent, I will lose my position of authority because kids will ask, a, uh, my kid will ask a question and I will not able to answer because I don't know, uh, I, I don't understand this culture. This is too strange for me. This is, uh, this is unclear for me. So another barrier. Um, a fourth barrier. Uh, we have here another image, and, and on this image, uh, shared by a respondent. And on this image, we have eagle and a book. The eagle, the eagle represents um, Polish culture, and the book represents Jewish culture. And the idea behind that, and the barrier behind that, is I feel no connection with Polish Jews. And their history is uh, not my history. So I will not come there because this is not my history, which is, of course, not true. But this is the barrier. Yes, we are not talking about the reality. We are talking about what people have in their heads and why people w will not even consider to go to, to, to the Pauline Museum uh, because they have all those barriers, barriers in their heads. But we have also drivers because, uh, in fact, we have we have some uh, families in the museum, and we asked the families who came why they they came, what why they they did come, and the first and most important driver is the, that children learn faster in modern museums. So I will come with my kids because this is a modern place, fashionable maybe place, yeah. So. I, I've heard that it is, it is a modern place, so I will come there because, because children learn faster in such a places. In such places. Okay, mm, but we have on this specific moment we had also on the table mm, the knowledge about uh, from a, another report what cultural activities are parents looking for their children. This is it comes from a from a report we found. Um, uh, in a Polish institution called National Cultural Center. Okay, and go go through that. So, what kind of cultural activity for children? Uh, of course, the activity must be nice and colorful. Uh, the kid must be active, and also uh, non-mainstream items can be uh, inappropriate for children. So, um, for us, it was like. It was um, it was important because we realized that if if we talk too much in the communication about civic education, maybe it will be for some parents too difficult, and maybe it will be frightening in a way because they they will consider okay maybe this is too complicated for my kids. Maybe next time, maybe um, maybe next year or in few years. So. It was also uh, an important, um, an important um, thing for us to consider the communication strategy. So, uh, in our plans, we planned the, the attendance at the level of forty-eight thousand people for for eight months. So, we had a calculation uh, on. Uh, we had a calculation of our current attendance, and we just we, we said okay. Realistically, we could attract in such period forty eight thousand people and uh, so after discussing all those barriers and all those needs and all the segments, we decide to to formulate the main message for this exhibition so that at this exhibition kids will play and learn in the same time. so this is quite a small uh, simple message. And we really 
decide to not to talk in the first communication about this civic education, etc. Because we considered maybe it will be okay. Uh, of course, we will talk about it in in media uh, with the journalists. But the main message, uh, but but we will hide this. In the main message, we'll hide this uh, this message about the civic education. And uh, a graphic designer did for us uh, key visuals based on this on this main message. So remember, main message is the at the exhibition, kids will play and learn. And on these key visuals, we have a uh, a boy and a girl. For us, it was important to have. A girl too, because um, if you think about King Matt as a as a figure as a figure as a hero, it could this exhibition could be considered as like a, by a simple association as an exhibition for boys maybe. So we wanted really to avoid this association that it is an exhibition for boys. We wanted to really put the accent. Uh, uh, on the fact that it is an exhibition for kids, for children, uh, boys and girls. And on this exhibition, uh, children will be happy, children will smile, ch children will play and learn in the same time. Um, so uh, let's go to the, promo to the promotion. Um, so the promotion was... Um, so uh, we did an outdoor campaign where we use this uh, these key visuals, and we also add few ambient elements. So we had few mirrors at tram stops. So this is like this is for social media. We we had mirrors with with crown, and so people could do selfies there and put on social media, and for that they had. Uh, uh, they had free tickets um, for at the exhibition if they if they put this uh, uh, this photograph on social media. And also we did a PR campaign. And I should say that the, uh, that uh, the main message was that the kids will play and learn. But uh, of course we we of course we we uh, we told the whole story about the exhibition, about the civic education, etc. And also what is important. If we talk, if we talk about PR, if we talk about media relations, is that is the fact that, in fact, uh, we can choose one story, as we did. Like um, kids will play and learn in the same time. It will be very colorful place for the kids, but also, uh, it, it is very uh, it is it is important to underline that if we if we do media relation, uh, the the way we we describe the exhibition depends on the profile of the of the title of the media and uh, depends on the uh, interests of a specific journalist so it is not one story in media there are different stories different aspects of the exhibition described in uh, in media we also did for uh, for this exhibition a paid facebook campaign and also a google ads um, campaign targeted at a uh, parents in Warsaw. So once again, coming back to our communication strategy and to our main message, uh, this Google ad campaign uh, uh, was targeted and was, uh, so uh, if you if you know how Google ad, uh, how Google ad works, I, I'm sure you know well, very well. So it is, so we use those, um, uh, those search words uh, connected with the main message, so free time with kids in Warsaw, so, um, uh, weekend with kids in Warsaw, so attraction for children, etc. So that those were uh, our search words for this uh, Google Ad campaign. Uh, we invited uh, to the exhibition. We invited the in Instagrammers, so we did a special day for Instagrammers. So. Uh, Instagrammers are heavy, so I mean, uh, I'm talking about the community of big fans and heavy users of Instagram. And we did a special day for them, and we had a big reach uh, with these Instagram photographs um, uh, from coming from that specific day. We also invited 
uh, 26 celebrity mothers um, and we had them on the exhibition and this is the, this also gave us a big reach because those mothers are followed by thousands of of uh, of followers and also we organized a special day for um, for pa parent blog bloggers uh, having in total more than 100,000 followers and uh, we were also present in 20 parents group on Facebook and uh, uh, there are uh, a lot of um, parents group on Facebook and uh, and we were present there and we we were, we were recommending the exhibition so this another reach so we, we reached in that way more than 100,000 people in total we added to that gifts uh, showing this funny aspect, uh, some, some funny elements of this exhibition. And also uh, what really works, and this is our, this is something we, uh, which is now, uh, which is now um, uh, in our experience, I should say, and we would like to repeat it in other exhibitions for, for the kids that um, um, we had a paper crown. Uh, so it was an exhibition signed for everyone, and it was uh, so we were distributing this crown to to, to children attending the exhibition, uh, and also this this paper crown was used in, a, in on family events. So it was really some something characteristic for the exhibition, and, and it it was it was really a not expensive form of promotion, and it worked uh, really well. Uh, so. You, you probably remember one of my um, one of the conclusions from the uh, from the workshops with um, children was that the kids would like to take away something. So it was uh, so the, this uh, paper crown was this kind of um, what was this kind of gadget. So the result of uh, the outcome of this exhibition was that we had far more people on this exhibition than we expected. So we had almost 80,000 visitors uh, during eight months. And what was surprising for us is was the fact that the majority of those visitors were the first time visitors. So it was really surprising. So we really, with this communication, with, the, with this focus on, on, um, on, uh, on the happy kids playing and learning in the same time time at the exhibition we really um, did overcome the barrier the barriers so let's go to another stage we've opened the exhibition and we decided to evaluate this exhibition with target groups because um, this, this first uh, those uh, first interviews those focus groups with, with the kids were organized only only with the prototypes and only with some ideas of what we will be doing at the exhibition. And now it's at its time to evaluate the exhibition with the target groups at the exhibition itself. So we did evaluation. Uh, what is important about this evaluation is the fact that we did focus groups within segments. So maybe it it is it seems to be difficult, but in fact, um, after uh, after the segmentation study, we have we we are using a recruitment algorithm, helping helping us to to really uh, select uh, for for a focus group, recruit for a focus group, uh, people from a specific segment. Uh, we added to that interviews of parents with with kids but still inter, but still the parents were coming from the segments so we did uh, focus groups with people from consumers of institutional culture knowledge seekers and aspiring mainstream so um uh, so what we what we did as results so generally speaking um, people parents parents were talking about the barriers we ha we knew already uh, the, those barriers before, but but they they said us during those those focus groups that yes, uh, we we know that it is the museum about the Holocaust. In fact, this is not 
100% museum about the Holocaust. There's only one of the galleries uh, uh, talks about the Holocaust. But the barrier, but the, but as we mentioned before, the association and the barrier is that it is museum about the Holocaust. Parents were also talking about drivers and expectations. And they said, okay, we came here because this is King Mats, you know, Polish Peter Pan, you remember? So, um, so King Matt is a, a, a warm person, a full children. Mm, I I like it. I remember it. I I, rem I like him. I remember him from my childhood. And also, this an, an alternative way to talk about Polish independence to the kids. Oh, one of the first impression, and maybe um, maybe not very. Uh, very positive was the uh, was the fact that we have security me measures in our museum, so it is not something very it is not something people like. And also, uh, people also uh, parents were interested by by the architecture. We have a great building, and it is uh, and and as first impression is is really great because people it is like a very very nice building. And also, uh, parents mention mention a lot of assets of the exhibition, like their the attractions are are engaging, and there, there's a lot of movement um, at the exhibition. And this is for kids and adults. And there are many elements causing strong positive emotions, like for example, this famous lion's tail. And and uh, Korczak is a writer uh, who they know and. Um, and they associate with something important and positive. And also uh, parents appreciated the fact that there is a lot of multimedia and sensuality at the exhibition. And they said, yes, the exhibition leaves an intellectual mark. But we realized that there is quite a big difference between how, how the segments perceived, perceived the same exhibition. So we realized that during those focus groups that the consumers of institutional culture and the knowledge seekers are able to describe far more things at the exhibition, like they are able to describe the benefits of tasks. They, they really talk to the children at the exhibition and, and we, we realized that they have simply a habit to talk with kids. And they spent more time at the exhibition and they help children at the exhibition. And they were not afraid of the museum space. So they used the shop restaurant and they would like to uh, come back to Pauline. So when I proposed them after the focus groups, uh, OK, uh, thank you for the focus group. Here you have the invitation uh, to the core exhibition. They said, uh, great, of course we will come. But the differ but it was not the same with the aspiring mainstream focus group. As I said before, they prefer a little bit lighter entertainment, and so they have different preferences. And even if we attracted them to the exhibition with this nice image, with the, those nice images, with those smiling kids, with this uh, message of um, playing and learning in the same time exhibition. They were a little bit disappointed at our exhibition. So uh, one uh, one thing which was maybe not pleasant was the fact that uh, they have uh, anti anti-Semitic stereotypes. And um, and first they said this exhibition is too gray. So they um, and. Uh, uh, and they were uh, they, they were disappointed by the fact that the children walked alone, and they um, and and they and nobody took uh, took care of the ch of the children. So so they were not not enough uh, educators volunteers there. They should uh, they um, so they said okay I was bored there, and and the kids were walking alone at the exhibition. Um, they were disappointed by the fact, and they said us that the, uh, the exhibition doesn't explain itself. Why? So they really needed some support 
And they said, okay, it's better in the Warsaw Uprising Museum. Warsaw Uprising Museum is a museum of, of one history and um, of Warsaw Uprising. It is, and it is a little bit like in a war. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it was uh, it was quite difficult, um, and uh, but we decided to after this research we uh, we realized that there are anyway things to to be improved at the exhibition. So we, re we realized that there are some navigation problem nav navigation problems the, uh, that uh, we realized that the visitors need more support at the exhibition. And uh, um, and we should add some instructions because because uh, it is it is not so obvious that every parent will will go through this exhibition and talk with the kids uh, with the kid and explain him. It is not not uh, not all the parents want to do that, and uh, and this is our big learning from this exhibition. And we realize also that uh, it is necessary to improve signposting uh, of the exhibition at the museum space, because uh, many parents were simply a little bit worried about uh, they they didn't want to go to the core exhibition, which was supposed to talk only about the Holocaust. So they they didn't want to go there. So so uh, we really. Uh, put accent out on improving the visibility of this temporary exhibition for families in order to avoid this uh, this moment of um, of hesitation so we go uh, at the final stage of this um, of this 360 degrees approach improve uh, improvement of the, uh, on the exhibition so we decided to improve few things after this evaluation so as I said, we we improved the visibility of the exhibition. So we put uh, this king mat uh, in the main hall, and uh, and also we added uh, um, arrows uh, arrows um, on the exhibition in order to improve the navigation, and also we added uh, some support. So first we added a manual on the website. So and this manual was uh, a series of films uh, about about different tasks, where our uh, one of our curator explained the tasks uh, to the parents. So we put this on the website. We put this on social media. We also added this manual in printed version on the exhibition. And also we decided to to uh, to have more educators and volunteers at the exhibition in order to support visitors. So it was our big learning that it is not everything to attract new newcomers, new visitors, but it is also important to to think about their needs, to to think um, uh, to think what they really need and what. Uh, what they would need at our exhibition uh, in order to to make the visit uh, more um, more easy to them. So uh, yeah, so this is our uh, three hundred. Uh, so um, so this is our uh, life cycle uh, uh, life uh, cycle of the exhibition, and also all those elements w when we listen to our potential visitors, when we see their perspective, when we see the data, and we re really integrate those data, th those voices into our um, exhibition. Yeah, so this is the end of this presentation and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Okay, so I see the, okay, I, I have this, um, the question about the ZMET, ZMET research. Mm, of course, uh, the ZMET is the mm, uh, ZMET metaphor technique, uh, and uh, this is like an American license method based on uh, deep, um, uh, deep interviews. And we uh, so uh, as we were observed, as we wanted to analyze the barriers, we did six. Um, uh, in-depth in depth interviews with parents who did visit Pauline with their kids 
and with and six uh, in-depth interviews with parents who did not visit uh, visited, visited Pauline with their kids because they have because because of some reason, yeah. And uh, they had uh, and the, the parents had had uh, a week to prepare the association, the images uh, they associate with our museum. So uh, during this, uh, during the, the long um, interviews, um, the researchers, the researcher um, was talking with them about about why they, they didn't come, why they will, uh, don't want to come or what or why they did come yeah so this is uh, this is this me method how did you convince your colleagues to try a participatory approach and adapt and accept the um, opinion of non experts so um so this is a, a long term process i i should say and um i should say that nowadays that okay uh, it is also it is important to mention that we are quite a new institution and and we are really focused on focused on um, have big attendance and attract uh, attract a lot of visitors so we really we really try to to um, to make uh, to uh, we, we really try to integrate curators in our decision process Okay, they, they decide with uh, we decide in groups. So if we decide about the about the communication strategy, we always invite curators. And and uh, there's no decision um, oh, there's no decision uh, uh, without them. So uh, we take decisions together. So it is not like the communications such a communi such a decision as communication strategy as main message is not the for us in our museum it's not the decision of communication department it's the decision of of curator of communications of course of education so we decide together and it is really ver very it works well if you do it in a consequent way and also uh, talking about this um, about this focus group with children, so it was uh, so in this specific exhibition we we had a curator from the exhibition department and also an edu and also uh, uh, and, we, and also a person who works in educational department and he who is educator. So we had in this specific ex exhibition we had this this approach of uh, educator and curator and also. The, the children so it was in fact if i remember well it was their initiative to in, to ask uh, to check um, the prototypes with the kid with the children um okay i will tell what did you offer to the instagrammer in exchange so uh, this is an important question uh, so we 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 are not offering money so it was simple um, as we are culture, so we are not uh, we, we we did not pay for that we organized a special spe simply we organized a special day for them so it was uh, so uh, uh, we have one day one technical day uh, a week in the Pauline museum where we are where we are closed for public so uh, we could organize this specific day for them so they felt they felt special that day and that's that's uh, why it worked are you going to adapt this exhibition online what kind of barriers uh, do you see in such online exhibition um uh, so, uh, unfortunately this exhibition is not uh, is not online mm, it's not online uh, and um, we didn't put it online generally speaking um I think the main barrier about the about the exhibition uh, online is the is the the quality of showing them and also the language we use. So there are the so uh, so uh, this is uh, a long story. But I think uh, many times uh, when I see the online exhibition, sometimes this I, I see the barrier of quality. But this is a long discussion. Uh, Okay. Um, 
uh, how long was the planning of the uh, and execution of the whole exhi exhibit? Uh, so, so I think that uh, the, this is the process of of one year and a half. Yes, so this is a long process, and this communication stage, this communication plan we did. I think six months before opening. So this is there are quite long processes. Um, thanks for presentation of the best practice. It is uh, sorry. Um, how you made uh, your initial segmentation? Okay. Um, so this is the, the segmentation is the. Uh, a nationwide study uh, we did with, together with three other institutions uh, with a um, museum of um, uh, with a uh, Chopin museum a uh, museum of um, his, uh, of uh, Polish history and uh, we uh, and uh, and this is a nationwide study so we did um, we had a representative sample of people who participate in culture, so of course, it was um, w before that. Before that study, we 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 spent a lot of time discussing what culture is generally, what is participating in culture, so, and with the definition we took is very large. So we did uh, so participating in culture is uh, seeing a film on Netflix, and also participating in culture is is going uh, to a fair. So and 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 we. And for, to do that, we hired a, a research agency, a professional research agency, who did, who, who analyzed on one hand the needs related to free time and the habits related to free time. So what people do in their free time and why people do that. So we really, so that there are two main criteria of this segmentation and this. Um, so uh, and it is and it is very helpful to have those have such criteria because we really uh, know why people why people go to to fairs or or why people go to to the museum you've seen in uh, my in our uh, three segments that for example knowledge seekers go to the museum because they are really focused on seeking knowledge and uh, and um, aspiring mainstream goes to the museum because because they are they would like to spend time together and learn something in their free time so the needs are different so if you base the segmentation on the needs it is really very useful tool for um for uh, for for the for the communication for for formulating your messages, so uh, so yeah, this is this, but this is a separate story about the segmentation. I can, I can talk about uh, that hours. So and I can't now because it is now, it is now time. So maybe I will have another question. Uh, there are more questions. What did uh, what did you mean by antisemitic stereotypes in children? So it is not antisemitic stereotype uh, by children. The antisemitic we did uh, we had focus groups with par par parents, so we didn't talk with children. And antisemitic antisemitic stereotypes. I mean, okay, in this specific um, in this specific segment, people said, okay, for example, I will. There, there are like, uh, for example. Uh, the shop is is I'm sure the shop is expensive, yeah, because uh, because this is a Jewish museum. This kind of stereotypes, but there are pa parent stereotypes in this specific segment, in aspiring mainstream segment, because we didn't have those stereotypes in um, in those uh, two previous segments. Okay, how did you con? Okay, I had this already. Uh, uh, how did you, uh, what did you have for different di disabilities? So we had, in Pauline Museum, we have a person who absolutely, who is really concentrating on, on, uh, ad on organizing events, uh, especially for, uh, for the, uh, for people with disabilities. So we had, uh, uh, so we had, uh, um, a few special uh, events for people uh, for families with disabilities 
uh, uh, so this is uh, yes we had we had uh, a lot of them and uh, especially with families this is it was uh, we had a lot of uh, events like 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 that like for um, events for for people with autism uh, for kids with autism okay Thank you very much for the best best practice. Oh, how do you plan uh, your budget to be able to implement the subsequent changes? Very important thing. So now we we try to plan the budget of an exhibition to to have uh, once the exhibition is ready to have a little bit uh, to to have still a, a small budget for some improvements after the evaluation. This is our goal. And uh, this is what we are doing. We try to do this, uh, but in this specific. But sometimes you, you can make some improvements, uh, even without um, a lot of money. So, for example, adding uh, adding a post, um, a sign posting, or or adding uh, or adding uh, arrows. It is uh, there are cheap things, and also uh, we added, as as I said, we added films. So we we also did it for not a lot with with a small budget so but but now our idea is to still keep uh, some money at the end to make maybe some small uh, improvements because there are things we cannot we cannot we can uh, not really imagine when we prepare the exhibition so once the exhibition is ready you see the things more some things more clearer and maybe sometimes you can improve you can still improve okay so thank you, uh, thank you for for uh, for those questions. Of course, if you if you have more questions, and also if you feel that I didn't answer all your questions, please send me the questions to my email. I will be more than happy to answer. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.